and I can shake it. Of course I can shake it, but I, I tell you right now that I bet the Gloria Messer, right in the control, because I see it, um, I, I, she forgot to put the quote of Mr. John Strasberg right in the beginning. I love that quote right there. Real success is the ability to express our humanity. I love <laughs> that. We have a very special guest tonight. I can barely breathe. This is very special to me. I've been admiring this man for a long time. I'm not trying to pick you up, though, because your wife is right on the set. So I don't want to fight. I don't want any arguments. I want love in the house. Yeah, I like you, but you would lose. But I know. Yeah. I know, John. I, know. Why I love we, my wife. That, can we have a... Can we have... <laughs> we have a... <laughs> Mr. John Strasberg in the house. Actor, director, playwright, producer, artist. I mean, there's... I can, I can spend the whole half hour trying to introduce you. Am I right? Or am I right? I have no idea. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, it's so much about you that it was going to take me a whole show just to give all the accomplishments, all your years in the theater. I'm just going to bask in all of this, you know, and adulation gonna... and everything. Oh, and we, we're having a little drink here, some coffee, some Coke, but the Mikos, the Mikos, I, I got to give a shout to my sponsors. I cannot forget the Mikos, the best Italian specialties, and Madonias, and Caterina Lancova, and Bruno Hair Salon. I know my hair looks a little up. What do you think, John? Any help? Uh, uh, no comment. No comment. You see, you see, I love it because I didn't know what to expect tonight. I'm going to have John Strasser in the house, and I was like, oh, my God, I can barely breathe, but now... As soon as you walked in, I felt your energy and said, he wants to have fun. So, ah, oh, that makes me feel so much better. Because yeah, if you're not having fun, you shouldn't be doing it. You should be dead. Right? It's too drastic. I, I have no idea because I don't know if that's fun. Yeah, yeah, but you should be, you should have fun doing what you're doing. Uh, I would hope so. Yeah. Yeah, if someone isn't, then they're doing the wrong thing. You're doing the wrong thing. I want to give a shot to this coming, no, this last Wednesday when we're invited to a day with the press, uh, Porgy and Bess, the beautiful musical, John, we're talking about it. Did you seen it when you were a yeah, kid? Yeah, I, I wasn't in it. You, but you, no. you, but you seen it. <laughs> when you were a kid. I saw it probably before you were born. You I, know, but yeah. Oh, so. man, can we talk about age? Yeah. Oh, age is such a bitch. Oh, I shouldn't say that. No, there's a line My. in the play where they go, uh, you know, age is a question of uh, mind over matter. Yeah. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. You love that? Give me five, yeah. John. You got it, baby. This you... is, well, it's not me. That was Mark Twain. That's Mark you know? Twain. Yeah, oh, one Mark of my Twain. favorites. Sporgy yeah. and Bess. Beautiful. We interview... Oh, my hair again, John. God damn it. Okay. Uh, I interview the actors, the cast. Audra McDonald. She is a four-time Tony winner. Okay? She was very down-to-earth, very special, wonderful voice. Norm Lewis and David Allen Greer. I enjoyed it very much. We're going to have uh, the show in a few coming weeks. We're working on it, but now we're going to talk about you. Keeping with the introduction, Mr. John Strasberg. He's the president and artistic director of? The Accidental Repertory Theater. How do we say that in Spanish? Ah. El Teatro de Repertorio Accidental. Oh, you Pro see that? Probablemente, no. Probablemente. Yeah, you see tiene que hacer al, la, al revés. Al revés. Yes, you yeah. see, guys, this is what happened. If we want to exclude the audience now, we can have a conversation with Spanish, and we can throw them off. John, what do you sí. think? Sí, vamos a ver. Can sí. we do that? You see? Sí. I can't. I was so impressed when you walked in and said, do you speak Spanish? Adelante. Para adelante. <laughs> okay, John, I want to talk about your play. I want to see your play two weeks ago. The Good Morning America, that's a long title. Yes. I admire your guts. The Good Morning America, Johnny Johnson Dream Show. I want to talk about the play because I really loved it. Yeah, I, I tried liked... to think of a different kind of title, but that's how it came out. That's so. how it came yeah. out. I was yeah. like, why such a long title? you got to give me a break. But it was so embracing. No, and it had to... It's, it's... Yeah, that's what it is. It is what it, it is. is. It is what it is. It yeah. is what it is. But I saw the work... I love the writing. I told you when we met last week, two weeks ago in the Living Theater, I said, oh, man, you got guts. You're brave because you're putting yourself, you're expressing your inner thoughts and putting it out there to the audience. It's such a brave manner. Well, I mean, can I we talk about the process and how you wrote it and casting the actors? I love the actors, all of them. <laughs> the process of this play. Yeah. Uh, I could probably make a, a comic 
short film about it, you know, because I came back uh, from Europe uh, the 4th of October and we didn't know whether we were going to do it or not because we didn't know if we had the money. Right. Uh, and I thought that we would squeak through, which we have, uh, but everything was done last minute. I mean, I, I didn't... You know, I didn't have someone to do the set. I didn't have, you know, didn't have anything, you know, and, and we went ahead. I had to do open auditions on the on the 10th, which I actually like to do because I'm one of these directors that always hopes I'm going to actually meet someone and give them an opportunity. Mm -hmm. But because, because the theater has a workshop, I had thought that most of the casting would come out of the workshop. And what happened is that uh, there were a lot of people who either were unavailable or for some reason or other didn't want to work, which always surprises me when an actor thinks they have something better to do than act. Right. But, and luckily, there, was a, there were a lot of really interesting people in the audition, so that the casting was kind of half people that I knew and half people that are totally new. Uh -huh. and, it, and it's actually a mix that has turned out very well. Right. But the whole, the whole process has been a little bit like that because I'm not sure that I... I think the original idea to want to do it was, uh, was because of some of the things that are talked about in the play that, that have been things that, that, that I've thought about for years. And I think when I began, I thought I was going to write a very serious play. <laughs> Yeah, there's <laughs> and a it was going to be this play in which this character comes to to grips with his truth and things like that. And uh, and as it progressed, I it started uh, all these. I started to think about people uh, because I am you know I like history. I like things, and mm -hmm. and I think that there's been a lot of very famous people who certainly have been talking about things that are going on now and, right. and it's been going on for thousands of years it's like nothing's new mm -hmm. and so these people would just start to come into my mind and and as a writing experience it was very strange because I would sit down and I had absolutely no idea what I was going to write and all of a sudden they would start talking and I would just write right um, which I do think sometimes happens in a creative process right. but it hadn't happened to me that way as a writer Mm -hmm. You know where where new people would kind of appear and mm -hmm. and and come into my space. I did a lot of research, obviously. Uh -huh. You know because a lot of the things that are, that the characters are saying are things that they actually said. The people that are dead who come back, you know, there are things that they actually did say, and uh, and it was fun. It was fun to do it because of how fitting someone would be talking and then someone would answer and, and they were things that they really said but it worked out where they were having these conversations on right. stage. Well, it makes you think. Yeah. It makes you think. It makes you wonder. You're daring. Well, you know, I think people should have a good time. I, I, I think if you're not having a good time, um, you shouldn't be in the theater. <laughs> right, right. Uh, including the audience. You including know, and the I audience. get bored very quickly. Oh, which is God. Part Are you of bored the, now? No, I'm okay, not bored. Cool. No, not yet. Should I be? No, please. I'm asking. <laughs> I'm asking you because I know you're a good observer, Mr. Strasberg. I know how tough you can be. So, ah, oh, he's going to make me nervous. But look at this. This is it, flowing. The energy is flowing between you and me and your wife. She's right here present. She's a witness that I'm not lying here. Right? Right. We're on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The actors. Why you thought I was going to, like... I thought, well, to be honest no, with you... a lot of people think that I'm some kind of, like, taller version of my father who was a very intimidating human being right. because he had tremendous difficulty expressing himself personally so he right. had this kind of defense mechanism right. which would intimidate you right you know and i didn't I'm, know what to expect i tell yeah. you mr john strapper the first time i saw you i saw you at the studio years ago when i went to see a session i was on observer ah. at the studio in Oh, God, I saw you in session. Oh, this man is so tough. I don't remember the actors, but I do remember you complaining and saying, you're not cold. You're not cold. And she was trying to say blah, 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 in the whole speech from A to C. And you said, you're not cold. <laughs> and she was on and on and said, you are not cold. And I said, oh, my God, I have to get to know this man. <laughs> but that was years ago, and I was scared to death. Now, when I, want, when I, when I saw you in the Living Theater two weeks ago, I said, oh, we I'm connected. Actually, just a person. 
Yes, yeah. I like that. You, so you I like it too. Yeah. It's good. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's about freedom, right? Is it? No, I think it's just about being the most human you can be. You know, I, I, you know, I grew up in, in a world full of very famous, wealthy, important people, and I didn't want to be like any of them. So. Do you think much about the past, Mr. Strasbourg? Do you? Uh, it's the wrong day to ask me that. Oh, man. No, 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 oh, no, 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 I've gone back to a book that I've been writing that I wanted to finish, which is a book uh, tentatively called Dreamers, which is about my family, which was inspired after my sister died. And I think I started to write the book because she wanted me to say things, and she kept bothering me about it until I started to write the book. And I, have n I've, I, I need to finish it. I want to finish it. But obviously, going back to it now, it just brings up a lot of stuff that I thought that I had. So are you, I thought it was over. I thought it was done with. I thought you with, got over and, it. You know, and, and you never get over it. You Do know, we, are we able as a human beings, because you're a deep man. I can see that in your character. Are we? Do you think we are? Are we able to exercise our demons truly? A hundred percent? Or you think it's a long, never-ending battle? I, I don't have this idea of perfection. I think... I oh, think me, the, me, neither know, do I. In fact, know. I don't believe in perfection. Yeah. Do you like perfection? No, you don't. Well, I was raised by a, in a world uh, uh, with a man who had an extraordinary uh, knowledge and, and, a very, and an idea of perfection. Yes. You know, so I obviously thought there was no hope for me at all. <laughs> right. Um, and it took me a long time uh, before I was able to redefine what I thought. Because I think that the idea of perfection is really a way to make people feel that uh, they are useless and small, mm -hmm. and therefore you can control them. Right. And, uh, and I think it's a conscious thing done in the society to try to disconnect people from their feelings. Right. Because if people stay connected to their feelings, they would never allow themselves to be treated the way most people allow themselves to be treated. And uh, uh, so I redefine perfection to being the most human one could be. I like that. Because if you look at a lot of great human beings, the thing that seems to make them great is that they're more human than the rest of us. You know? Right. So, you know, right. And that's what you learn from it, at least to me. Yeah, the humanity, yeah. like you said, yeah. humanity. That's why yeah. I left the right That was always very important to me. I, you know, it was much more important to me to be the person that I felt I was than to be successful in, in the conventional sense of the word. Right. You know, I was, I would, if I could be a millionaire, I would love to be a millionaire. I would love to be, I, I don't care about being famous. I'd, I would like to be in a position where I could do whatever I want to do. Right. Um, Anybody can relate to that. In, in some ways, I, I, ha I have that. I work in Europe. I, I do a lot of things that I want right? to do. And you still well, go. I lived in Europe for 12 years, um, which is where I met my wife. And, uh, um, and I still will go. Uh, I spend about three or four months of the year directing or teaching, depending on what, depending on what I'm doing. Um, and that, that freed me a lot because when you live in other countries, you see that people uh, can be happy and they have other values. You know, when, right. when you get here, you know, and when I came back, I said, oh, I don't want to fall back into this idea that in order to be successful, you have to be rich because otherwise you can't do anything. Yeah, that's horrible. You know, that's and, very and, scary. And like... there is this idea, which is what I think drives a lot of the problems that, that we see going on. Right. You know, these guys just think they got to make more money because they feel so impotent, you know, and then, right. then they'll do anything. Right. And they'll screw up everybody's life just because they're insecure little men. Mm -hmm. um, I like that, insecure little men. I like that. Well, I mean, it is what it is, what you, like what you said right in the well, beginning. That is, you know, unfortunately, a lot of famous, you know, powerful people in history are insecure little men. Right. I like that. I like the ring. Where is that ring from? From Spain? You see, Barbara, we have Barbara Jimenez here with us. No, these are, these are, are Navajo oh, and wow. Zuni. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, are you, I'm kind of wondering, because I see the rings and I see your demeanor. Are you close to God? 
I'm not a religious person. I'm Are a you? spiritual person. But do you believe that it's a well, force? Well, I think the best thing, force, <laughs> it's well, hard I, to deny. I'm from Star Wars. It is very hard to deny that there is a force. Okay, yeah. I like that. I we am, believe in gravity. I, too.